Today on the Health Informer, should you avoid eating fish because of mercury? Fish is one of the healthiest foods you can eat. That's because it's a great source of protein, micronutrients, and healthy fats. However, some types of fish can contain high levels of mercury, which is toxic. In fact, mercury exposure due to eating large amounts of fish has been linked to serious health problems. Almost any fish lover has seen the ominous warnings printed on the restaurant menu, high in mercury. Sounds scary, right? Well, before we get into that, let's go back a little and try to understand just how mercury is winding up in the fish on your plate and why certain fish should be avoided. Mercury itself isn't to blame. It occurs naturally at low levels in rock, soil, and water throughout the world. However, human activities have increased the total mercury concentrations in the atmosphere by about 450% above natural levels, leading up to dangerous levels for humans, especially if it ends up in their systems in the wrong way. Less common causes of deficiency include conditions affecting the stomach or intestines that interfere with absorption of vitamin B12, inadequate dietary intake, or certain medications. If left untreated, B12 deficiency tends to worsen and irreversible problems involving the nerves and brain may develop over time. The risk of experiencing a number of serious complications, including heart failure, may also increase. For this reason, it is important to seek medical advice without delay. Of the sources of human-caused or anthropogenic mercury emissions, the burning of fossil fuels like coal and gold mining are the most to blame for our mercury problem. When fossil fuels are burned, mercury is released into the atmosphere. Once the mercury is in the atmosphere, it can travel for thousands of miles and will eventually make its way into the oceans or large bodies of water, either by being deposited there or ending up on land and getting washed downstream. What are symptoms of B12 deficiency? A person with vitamin B12 deficiency may notice general symptoms of anemia as well as symptoms that are more specific to the condition. Symptoms more specific to B12 deficiency include pale yellow skin, red tongue, mouth ulcers and canker sores, constipation, pins, needles, numbness or other strange sensations in the hands, legs or feet. In this form, mercury poses little danger because living things can get rid of it quickly. The problem is that bacteria convert mercury as it is carried down from the ocean surface, turning it into a highly toxic form called methylmercury. The food chain takes it from there, with methylmercury getting absorbed by photoplankton, microscopic marine algae, which are then eaten by zooplankton, tiny marine animals, which are then feasted upon by small fish. These small fish and organisms are eaten by bigger fish, who are then eaten by even bigger fish, and on and on. What are symptoms of B12 deficiency? A person with vitamin B12 deficiency may notice general symptoms of anemia, as well as symptoms that are more specific to the condition. Symptoms more specific to B12 deficiency include pale yellow skin, red tongue, mouth ulcers and canker sores, constipation, pins, needles, numbness or other strange sensations in the hands, legs, or feet. Methylmercury is absorbed by the bigger animal, and since the bigger the fish, the longer it lives, and the more it eats, larger fish species accumulate a lot more methylmercury in their body. In other words, fish higher up the food chain bioaccumulate more methylmercury than do those lower in the food chain. The largest predatory fish in the sea, like sharks, swordfish, and tuna, can have methylmercury concentrations in their muscle and in the meat of the fish that are 10 million times higher than those of their surrounding habitat. What are symptoms of B12 deficiency? A person with vitamin B12 deficiency may notice general symptoms of anemia, as well as symptoms that are more specific to the condition. Symptoms more specific to B12 deficiency include pale yellow skin, red tongue, mouth ulcers and canker sores, constipation, pins, needles, numbness or other strange sensations in the hands, legs or feet. This is why parents are advised against giving their children too much canned tuna fish. Of course, who is higher than the largest fish in the food chain? That's right, 
humans. Accordingly, seafood is the source of nearly all of the methylmercury that we acquire in our bodies. There is still much to be learned about the effects of methylmercury on adults, but we do know that methylmercury presents the greatest risk to fetuses, infants, and children, whose growing brains and nervous systems can be adversely affected. What causes B12 deficiency? Pernicious anemia is a common cause of vitamin B12 deficiency. There are several other possible causes of the deficiency, but they tend to be less common. What is pernicious anemia? In order for B12 to be absorbed by the body, it needs to be combined with a protein called intrinsic factor in the stomach. This protein is produced by cells in the stomach lining. In people with pernicious anemia, the body's immune system mistakenly attacks these cells, preventing intrinsic factor from combining with vitamin B12 and hampering its absorption. How to reduce exposure to mercury? Now that we understand where mercury comes from and how it gets into our bodies, we need to address how to reduce our exposure to mercury. Well, the answer requires both difficult changes to the world's energy supply and simpler choices to our diet. First, since all fish contain at least traces of methylmercury, we need to know what fish we can eat and how much of it. What causes B12 deficiency? Pernicious anemia is a common cause of vitamin B12 deficiency. There are several other possible causes of the deficiency, but they tend to be less common. What is pernicious anemia? In order for B12 to be absorbed by the body, it needs to be combined with a protein called intrinsic factor in the stomach. This protein is produced by cells in the stomach lining. In people with pernicious anemia, the body's immune system mistakenly attacks these cells, preventing intrinsic factor from combining with vitamin B12 and hampering its absorption. To protect yourself and your family, the answer isn't to avoid seafood, it's to avoid mercury, and to do this by avoiding seafood that's high in the food chain. If you think back to the section about bigger fish eating smaller fish, it makes sense eat the fish or shellfish lower in the food chain and you're bioaccumulating much less mercury. For pregnant or nursing women, as well as young children, the risks of mercury are significant enough to cut out high mercury fish from their diet entirely. What causes B12 deficiency? Pernicious anemia is a common cause of vitamin B12 deficiency. There are several other possible causes of the deficiency, but they tend to be less common. What is pernicious anemia? In order for B12 to be absorbed by the body, it needs to be combined with a protein called intrinsic factor in the stomach. This protein is produced by cells in the stomach lining. In people with pernicious anemia, the body's immune system mistakenly attacks these cells, preventing intrinsic factor from combining with vitamin B12 and hampering its absorption. Specifically, we're talking about large, top-of-the-food-chain fish such as swordfish, king mackerel, shark, and bluefin tuna. It is also possible to develop mercury poison from eating too much seafood. In small amounts, many types of fish are okay to eat once or twice per week. If you're pregnant, the March of Dimes recommends eating no more than 6 ounces of tuna per week and 8 to 12 ounces of other types of fish. This will reduce the risk of fetal mercury exposure. You'll also want to watch your fish consumption if you're nursing as mercury can be passed through breast milk. Pernicious anemia is an autoimmune condition that most commonly affects people over 50 years old and women appear more likely to develop it. Pernicious anemia is thought to run in families and seems to affect people who have had other autoimmune conditions such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis and Addison's disease. Your healthcare practitioner can order a blood test to check for pernicious anemia. Below you will see a chart of fish and their relative mercury levels. Keep in mind this is also a global problem. Countries in East and Southeast Asia account for nearly 50% of anthropogenic mercury emissions. Additional symptoms of B12 deficiency include vision disturbances, difficulty walking and balance issues, perceptible differences in mood, thoughts, and behavior, confusion and difficulty thinking, in severe cases, signs of dementia, memory loss, irritability, depression, and psychosis. Other causes of mercury poisoning. Mercury poisoning can also be environmental or from exposure to other forms of the metal. They include broken fever thermometers, 
silver, dental fillings, also known as amalgam, certain types of jewelry, skin products, although those made in the U.S. usually do not contain mercury, exposure to toxic air in industrialized communities, and CFL bulb breakage. Additional symptoms of B12 deficiency include vision disturbances, difficulty walking and balance issues, perceptible differences in mood, thoughts, and behavior, confusion and difficulty thinking, in severe cases, signs of dementia, memory loss, irritability, depression, and psychosis. How are mercury levels tested? Having your doctor test for mercury levels is the only way to know how much mercury is in your body. There are several tests your doctor may use. Blood test. A blood test indicates whether you've been exposed to mercury in the last few days. However, blood levels of certain types of mercury decrease rapidly within three to five days. Urine test. Over a period of several months, the level of mercury in the urine also decreases. Hair test. Hair tests can show signs of long-term mercury exposure. B12 deficiency can also be caused by conditions affecting the stomach and intestines. People who have atropic gastritis, helicobacter pylori, or a genetic condition that causes a lack of intrinsic factor can all cause B12 deficiency. Another cause can be people who have had Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or who have had surgery to remove part or all of the stomach or the end of the small intestine. If you want to test your mercury level, make an appointment with your doctor. Tell them about any time that you've been exposed to sources of mercury. Make sure you bring up any unusual symptoms you've been having, too. Based on your exposure history and symptoms, your doctor will determine whether a blood, urine, or hair test will be the most effective. Additional symptoms of B12 deficiency include vision disturbances, difficulty walking and balance issues, perceptible differences in mood, thoughts, and behavior, confusion and difficulty thinking, in severe cases, signs of dementia, memory loss, irritability, depression, and psychosis. Symptoms of mercury poisoning. Mercury is most notable for its neurological effects. In general, the US FDA advises that too much mercury can cause anxiety, depression, irritability, memory problems, numbness, pathologic shyness, and tremors. Additional symptoms of B12 deficiency include vision disturbances, difficulty walking and balance issues, perceptible differences in mood, thoughts, and behavior, confusion and difficulty thinking, in severe cases, signs of dementia, memory loss, irritability, depression, and psychosis. More often, mercury poisoning builds up over time. However, a sudden onset of any of these symptoms could be a sign of acute toxicity you should call your doctor right away if you suspect mercury poisoning. Mercury poisoning symptoms in adults might experience hearing and speech difficulties, lack of coordination, muscle weakness, nerve loss in hands and face, trouble walking, and vision changes. Additional symptoms of B12 deficiency include vision disturbances, difficulty walking and balance issues, perceptible differences in mood, thoughts, and behavior, confusion and difficulty thinking, in severe cases, signs of dementia, memory loss, irritability, depression, and psychosis. In children and infants, mercury poisoning can disrupt fetal and early childhood development. Infants and young children who have been exposed to high levels of mercury may have delays in cognition, fine motor skills, speech and language development, and visual spatial awareness. How is B12 deficiency diagnosed? If B12 deficiency is suspected, your doctor will usually request a blood test. These tests measure levels of serum B12 and folic acid, as well as the size and concentration of hemoglobin within the red blood cells. Mercury poisoning treatment. There's no cure for mercury poisoning. The best way to treat mercury poisoning is to stop your exposure to the metal. If you eat a lot of mercury-containing seafood, stop immediately. If toxicity is linked to your environment or workplace, you might need to take steps to remove yourself from the area to prevent further effects of poisoning. However, this type of testing is not always accurate, 
as some people experience symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency despite their blood tests indicating normal levels. The reason for this is that the test measures the total amount of the vitamin in the blood, but not all of it can necessarily be used by the body, and therefore there may be higher amounts of B12 in the blood that the body is not able to use. This is also known as functional deficiency. For this reason, your doctor may also test for folate deficiency. If your mercury levels reach a certain point, your doctor will have you do a chelation therapy. Chelating agents are drugs that remove metal from your organs and help your body dispose of them. Long term, you may need continuing treatment to manage the effects of mercury poisoning, such as neurological effects. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, please like and subscribe.